It's the Daily Doug. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Doug. Thanks for being with me today. My friends, you have arrived on a Friday. That means it's a Masterpiece Friday, and I have what I think will be a Masterpiece Friday. It better be because of all the people that have been clamoring for me to do music from the Final Fantasy franchise. And that's what we're up to today. We're going to be listening to the song One Winged Angel, and I'm happy that you are with me. So Final Fantasy, this is one of the more noteworthy and famous science fantasy media empires in the world. Even I have heard of it. I haven't played it yet, uh, but even I have heard of it. And uh, the first <clears throat> Final Fantasy role-playing game was released in 1987. It goes all the way back to there. And they now have 16 main entries of the game available. I call it a media empire because it's not just a game anymore, right? The games themselves, based on what I read today, have evolved into different types of action and role-playing and first-person and tactical and spy and whatever else you can think of, right? And the Final Fantasy kind of as a whole has uh, kind of spread its wings into novels, into magazines, anime, and uh, music with uh, great uh, music accompanying the uh, the game. And so ever since I started looking into music from the gaming and the anime tradition, people have been in mass uh, really waiting and wanting me to get to music from Final Fantasy with its music composed by Nobuo Uematsu. And so I am eager to hear this. I haven't heard his music yet or music from this series, and I'm, I'm excited to do it. So like I said, we're listening to One Winged Angel. This is Sephiroth's theme, and Sephiroth is our antagonist and villain in this iteration of the game. The theme was first introduced in Final Fantasy VII, which was released in 1997. And it was the first in the series to, ha to have high-quality vocals included in the mix, and the theme is used in the game, I think, during the final or cumulative, or, you know, the ending sort of battle scene. And uh, as I read in, it's one of the more recognizable musical pieces that Uematsu has written for the game. And here's what I also found, friends. I, I, I'm really looking forward to hearing this because he apparently takes inspiration from Stravinsky's Rite of Spring which is a big piece in the classical repertoire. He is also influenced by classical rock tunes of the late 60s and early 70s as he composed the work. So how's that going to fit together? I'm really uh, curious to see how this, uh, how this works. With the original soundtrack, he decided to make use of MIDI instrumentation to avoid overloading the game's active memory while playing. It. And so um, uh, Megan checked into it. She says, yeah, it's got some MIDI sounds in it. But today, instead, I'm going to hear the version of this song from Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. This is a computer animated film that's based on this seventh iteration of the game. The game came out in 97. The film came out in 2005. And for this soundtrack, the music was reimagined a bit and recorded with real instruments as opposed to MIDI sounds. So that's the one that I want to go with. Plus, it's also by far the most viewed version of this song on YouTube. And millions of y'all can't be wrong. So let's get it, y'all. I've been talking long enough. This is going to be One Winged Angel, uh, the Sephiroth theme from Final Fantasy. Off we go. They weren't kidding. That's the Rite of Spring, or a takeoff on it. Horn. Hang on. Okay. More orchestral, like real orchestral, than I was ever expecting. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun, y'all. I think it. I think it's that that timpani. I'm going to rewind this a little bit while I'm talking. The timpani at the beginning of that. I think it's doing tritones. It's hard to tell sometimes if the timpani's slightly out of tune. It might just be sharp or 
or flat or something, but it sounded like they were doing tritone, <laughs> right? So let's try it again. One winged angel. I was not prepared. I think I might be now. Let's try it. Here we go. to be flat. Triplets? Multiple horns in unison. Piccolo ribs. Militaristic. Tone over that D. Way powerful. Can't believe how great it sounds. section. Using the electric guitar as a melodic instrument in the orchestra. That's a German augmented six chord. Back to one. It's gotta be. Maybe this is why the angel only has one wing. The other one was left behind. This thing is cooking.
sorry, you don't win the game this time. <laughs> Where is this going? for the tenors to do. over by that, y'all. Ooh, wow. Yeah, I don't... <sighs> Congratulations. <laughs> That's That was an amazing synthesis of all of those different types of instruments and sounds. I don't know if I've ever heard it done quite so well. Um... Big time rock band with a big time orchestra just right next to each other. And if you're going to do kind of heavy metal, Stravinsky is not a bad classical composer to pattern your work off of because Stravinsky was really into those cutting uh, metrical shards in his, in his work with really sharp edges and angular melodies and and ideas. And it, and it fits well, I think, with, with the percussive nature of of a band like like a rock band um <clears throat> like i said this is my first time hearing uh, nobuo's music uh i'm extremely taken with it impressed uh especially because i read earlier he's a self-taught musician y'all he hadn't had any formal training or piano lessons his college degree is in english not music and uh, when I read more about him, he cites Elton John as one of his biggest popular music influences, along with the Beatles, uh, Emerson, Lake and Palmer, Simon and Garfunkel. Uh, but it was music of bands like Pink Floyd and King Crimson that most heavily direct uh, influenced and uh, directed his ideas in this Final Fantasy composition and in all of his Final Fantasy compositions. So when uh, he was working, this, uh, as I read, as the story goes, he was working as a, as a younger person at a music shop in Tokyo. And uh, an employee of this video game development company um, uh, asks if he'd be interested in creating some music for some of their titles. And he thought, sure, because he had done some of that. Uh, and, um, and that it would be a nice side gig first. But it ended up jumpstarting his entire composing career. And uh, like I said, I'm just especially impressed at how he is able to incorporate these classical sounds, acoustic driven instruments with the heavy metal and the plugged in and the amps and all of that stuff with the guitar led sounds, all of that in a single composition. Um, the sound engineers did a great job, uh, but it's you can tell that the piece is written specifically to include both of those things and treat them as equal members of the ensemble. And that's not something that historically has been done very often. And it's a trend more recently, especially in gaming and anime that I've heard where these styles, everybody come on, let's make the best music we can. We've got all of this, uh, these styles and tendencies and traits of music over the past hundreds of years that we can choose from. Let's Let's make a stew and do and do something new, you know, and that's what I hear in this Final Fantasy. What a fantastic way to be introduced to music from this tradition. I think I will definitely be back, but I believe that's all for today, friends, and I thank you for being with me. We'll see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug. It's The Daily Doug. Welcome to The Daily Doug. The day.